morning, everybody. Welcome to God's house this morning, first Sunday of Advent. So I hope you're ready for Christmas season. Sometimes it seems too early, and yet uh, we want to make sure that we take the time to really prepare for what Christ has for us this season. And as we prepare our hearts for Christ's birth, and as we think about it, to think about the incredible mystery. I mean, think about this, that the, the God of the universe, who always was, who always will be, this infinite, all-powerful God, actually came and was born as a human being on this earth. Emmanuel, God with us. And I want to begin, and I want to ask you all to be thinking about this one question this morning. What are you hoping for this Christmas? What I want you to do, if you're at home or here, uh, get out your phones and text me. Just one word or a little phrase of, what are you hoping for this Christmas? Um, maybe it's presents. <laughs> maybe it's for friends. Maybe it's for a cure for COVID. Whatever it is, just text me what it is that you're hoping for this Christmas. See, Christmas really is about hope, isn't it? And the scriptures are full of hope. And hope brings joy, which is why Christmas, or Christ's birth, was always meant to bring joy. Remember the angels? I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. And as I, Isaiah was thinking about God with us, he says this in Isaiah chapter 12. He says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. See, when we begin to see the presence of God among us, the joy will start to build. Amen? So let's begin by worshiping this God, Emmanuel, God with us. Earth and shadow Restlessly hold Where labor's waiting In silent hope For the promise It longs to know What heaven Then the angels in holy haste lift their anthem, your Savior lays in a manger in humble form, your King.
Amen. That's a beautiful new song. I like that. Just a couple announcements. Um, as many of you know, we're going to be having our annual meeting right after the service uh, where we'll vote on our budget and nominations. And um, this is a new experience for all of us. And so it's going to be a little different for those of you that are here in person. You can just stay and we'll carry on with our meeting after a brief break, I would think. Um, for those of you who are at home, uh, you can uh, probably, uh, you can text me your comments if there is something you need to know. Um, we're still learning, and so in our uh, form that we sent out to you by email, there was a place for comments, but there was not a place for us to respond to your comments. So we'll try and respond to some of those comments during the meeting. But uh, we're just going to have to be creative about figuring out how we communicate through this. So if your uh, comment does not get answered or um, there are things you still need to know, um, sorry if it doesn't happen right away, but uh, make sure that you talk to us about any questions that you might have. Um, make sure if you haven't already done so that you uh, fill in those ballot forms and get those sent in, or once again, uh, phone in or uh, text in or something that your vote on those things. Um, there will be, it will be a different live stream than this service. So if you are uh, planning on attending the meeting from home, you will need to get that uh, uh, email invite um, that you would have received. Uh, you can go on Teams or uh, there should be some invite there. Or you can come join us. <laughs> Either way. It's on the web page, which whether they want to join by Teams, which is interactive, or okay. whether they just want to join by the streaming watch. Okay. So there's two options for you. You can go online on our church website. And there's two different options. If you want to be interactive with the meeting, you can go on Microsoft Teams. There's a button for that. There's a button for that. Or you can just watch it on the live stream. And there's a button for that too, but you cannot interact with that one. Is that all clear? Okay. And so that'll begin right after the service. We will be having a Christmas Eve service, God willing. So please uh, keep that in mind. We'd love to see some of you. We are still, with the latest regulations from the government, we are still allowed the same amount of people, one third of our capacity. So. Pretty much all of us can still fit in here. We can fit about 70. So we're okay for the most part. So I encourage you to come out uh, with your family, your cohort, whatever that is, and join us for that. Let's pray as we begin. God, I just thank you for each person who is listening in or here today. And we welcome your presence and we come to you because we, only through you can we find true hope. And God, we know this Christmas especially, we need hope. We're looking for hope for to see family. Hope for reconciliation in our world. Hope for cures. Hope for joy this Christmas. Hope for fellowship and company this Christmas. God, we look to you for these things that we need. God, we, we just pray for each person that their hope would be found in Jesus who gives us joy. And this morning as we praise and worship your holy name, I pray that you would draw us into your presence in a new way this Christmas season. That we would experience Emmanuel God with us, feel your presence right here this morning. Go before us as we worship in Jesus' name, amen. Haram's going to keep leading us in worship. Just one more, you calm the storm that surrounds me just one word the darkness has to retreat 
just one touch I feel the presence of heaven just one touch my eyes are open to see my heart can't help but believe there's nothing that our God can't do there's not a mountain that he can't move oh praise the name that makes the way there's nothing that our God can't do just one word you heal what's broken inside me just one word in you revive every dream just one touch i feel the power of heaven just one touch my eyes are open to see my heart can't help but believe there's nothing that I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing Open up my eyes 
One of the themes that last song speaks about is the whole world shaking. And one of the things you see in scripture is that when everything is shaking around us, sometimes God shakes things up to get our attention and to help us find where the solid foundation is. And the only real solid foundation right now is Jesus, amen? Cecilia is going to come uh, do our Advent reading. Good morning, everyone. Today we are lighting the, uh, the first um, candle of Advent, and it is um, the expectation of hope. Our reading is from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Today, we light the candle of expectation and hope. May it remind each and every one of us of God's great promise to us. He is our hope, He is our Redeemer, He is our Savior. Let us pray. Father, during the Advent season, may we be reminded of your promises to us and your fulfillment of them. Help us to prepare our lives for His Advent within us. In the, precious, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So oh. 
That song just today gave some new meaning to me. Um, I just heard it in a different way. And I think because of what I'm about to share in our, our message this morning, maybe you'll discover some of the same meaning. If there's ever a Christmas that was tough, it's this one. And if there's ever a season in the year that's tough, it's Christmas season. So it really is a tough season that we're moving to in a number of ways. See, here's the problem. If your life is difficult, then all the Christmas songs are just going to hurt more and open up the wounds. I mean, you think about the themes of a lot of our Christmas songs. It's the most wonderful time of the year, right? And if it's not for you, then it doesn't feel so good. Or have a holly jolly Christmas. Yay! Or jingle bells. Or walking into wonderland. Or if you're a follower of Christ, the joy to the world. The message of the angels. That, that joy. And all of the communication that Christmas time is that, that this is supposed to be this joyful, trouble-free season. And when we have troubles, and we all do right now, it can seem kind of jarring or it doesn't seem to fit our experience. But let me ask you honestly, is that really what you're experiencing? All those themes of those songs. And for most of us, maybe not. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And yet for some of us, our personal problems and the weight and the fear of job instability and the COVID scares and the loneliness, all of those things together put this weight on us that keep us from often experiencing the joy of the season. And maybe for other, but others of you, you've just felt like you've had one crisis after another that's run you over with such an avalanche of problems that maybe it's hard to even think about Christmas. And some of us are so busy working hard that there really isn't any time to sit around and sing and enjoy pleasant thoughts. Or maybe there isn't really anything wrong in your world, but for some reason you're just not enjoying life as you see this Christmas season approaching. It's not providing that emotional lift that you hope for. And we all have imaginations of what Christmas should be like, and it's not doing it for us. And maybe you're looking forward to Christmas and you think of Christmas as gone by. You think of the parties and you think of the friends that you're around and the family gatherings, and everything seems to rob you of your joy. Maybe you have less money this year to share with others. And so Christmas is not going to be as happy as you expected. In fact, for some people, it's almost depressing. A lot of suicides happen around Christmas. The world doesn't look like a winter wonderland. It just looks like, well, winter. <laughs> So disillusionment at Christmas time is not an unusual thing. We get so hyped up with expectations sometimes of what Christmas is supposed to be that often the real thing just cannot measure up and we're disappointed. So what do we do this Christmas so we don't waste a whole season of disappointment and depression and so on? How do we avoid the disillusionment of Christmas? How do you improve your level of joy this Christmas? I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to read the story of the wise men that we just sang about. Verse 1 of Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? 
We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I might go and worship them, worship him too. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. It's a pretty fascinating story. I used to also, always, as a kid, think about how did they know which house? Like, how did that star situate over the house? And all those thoughts. There's a lot of mystery around it. But clearly, these wise men, probably who knew something about stars, saw this special star, knew that a king was going to be born, and came to worship him. And so you see these wise men, it says these were wise men from the east wanting to honor him with gifts. And they set out on this journey following the star to see this newborn king. And from the attitudes of the wise men and the events that surround this journey, we learn a little bit about how we can raise our joy a little bit this Christmas. So let's have a look at it. And I want you to think about this story in terms of three questions. The first question is, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? See, our level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what it is you are focused on and what you are hoping for this Christmas. So we need to begin with asking ourselves some questions. What is it I want to get out of Christmas? What is it that would make our Christmas wonderful and satisfying? What is it for you? Snow? <laughs> Families together? Happy times? Let's look at some of the texts that I got. <laughs> One person said, I'm hoping for summer. <laughs> A couple of you said family. Somebody said reconciliation in the world. Getting together as a family and so on. Certainly family is in our hopes and dreams for the season. And there's this feeling that we want that's defined by this holiday spirit. Maybe finding the right present to give. Getting the present you've been hoping for. And the problem with all these things is that because many of these things are temporary and often they're out of our control, they can leave us disappointed. If you're expecting, hoping for family this Christmas and as you see things unfolding, maybe it's not going to happen and you can feel disappointed. Maybe think back to a previous Christmas when you were disappointed by Christmas because it didn't deliver what you thought it would. See, the problem is not Christmas itself, is it? The problem is our expectations. We're looking for the wrong thing to fill that void so that every Christmas we keep coming up to this disappointment. Look back at verses 1 and 2 of Matthew chapter 2. 
It says that Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born of the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and what? We have come to worship him. See, their expectation was to come and worship whoever they found, this new king. Now, there's a lot to unpack just in that little bit. First of all, these magi were leaders. They've been called everything from kings to wise men to astrologers, some kind of leaders of, that were wise from another country, from the east. And again, there's a lot of ex, um, expectations of who these people were and a lot of uh, wondering who they were. And traditions through the years have placed them everywhere from India to China to Persia, different places they could have come. But we know at any rate, it's clear that it would have taken them a long time to reach Jerusalem. And it seems as though, based on who Herod chose to kill, based on what he heard from them, that it could have taken upwards of two years to get there. Just remember, there's no planes or trains or automobiles, right? So they've got everything shut down and not because of COVID. And so they've got to get there by a donkey, camels, horses, whatever they had on foot. And it's going to take a long time. But imagine traveling for two years with your only expectation at the end of this long journey is to find a young child that you're going to worship. There is something significant about, enough about this one child that you are willing to make a two-year journey to see him and worship him. Is that your expectation this Christmas? Are you coming to worship? And so they arrive at Jerusalem knowing this newborn king was special. And so they assumed that Herod, the reigning king, must surely know about Jesus. And so they asked him, hey, Herod, know where this king is? And you can imagine Herod, who's pretty focused on himself. He's pretty much the center of his universe. It's like, what? Another king? How come I didn't know about this? Right? We've got to get rid of him. I'm the king. Right? So he has no idea, really, about Jesus. And so he scrambles with his scribes and wise people to figure this out. And imagine this. Herod, who is self-absorbed, he doesn't get it. And these three prestigious leaders from far, far away come to Jerusalem with gifts, and they're not for him. You think he was unhappy that Christmas? I don't think his Christmas was full of joy that time. See, when our focus is all on ourselves and what we're going to get out of this Christmas, oftentimes we miss the joy and you're likely to be disappointed. If it's up to others to come through, to bring the right gifts, to make the right atmosphere, to have the right people there, to have the right meal, we might get disappointed. See, because real joy, listen carefully, it only, it only comes through focusing on the one who was born on Christmas Day, Jesus. See, they were looking for Jesus. These wise men were looking for Jesus. And when they found him, they were full of joy and bowed down and worshiped him. Because Christmas for them was all about an opportunity to worship Jesus. They were looking for Jesus and they found him. And if our goal this Christmas changes to worshiping Jesus, I doubt very seriously if you're going to be disappointed. And I, I would guess that you're going to find a whole lot more joy. The second question I want you to think about is, where are you looking for it? First of all, you've got to know for sure what the important thing is to look for at Christmas. But then the second thing is, where are you looking for it? 
Notice the Magi. When they come these two years, they are not believers in Jesus at this point, right? They've never been to church. They don't know the story. We know it in hindsight. But they assumed that because he was a king, that he must be born in Jerusalem, in the capital, the king's seat. That's where he must be, where the visible power was. It didn't even cross their minds that this new king was a different kind of king. And honestly, who can blame them? Or for that matter, many people out there who don't know Jesus. Can you blame them for looking for joy somewhere else? Looking for something else to worship or looking in the wrong place? There are many people that are going to be looking to worship in the bars, in front of a TV this Christmas. And they're going to be disappointed. See, because without Jesus, without God's direction, all we have is our brain and our own thoughts to guide us. We need to come to God if we're going to find Jesus. And the star that they were following indicated there was this, going to be this birth of this phenomenal event, this once-in-a-lifetime event, this new king that was going to come in Israel. And so the Magi go to Jerusalem. But what a mistake that was, wasn't it? They get there and realize, uh-oh, this isn't it. Herod's obviously ticked off, or at least he doesn't seem totally settled about this, and he doesn't even know about this. And certainly when Herod heard about this, he was jealous, and he's ready to kill Jesus. And isn't it so tempting to look in the wrong places? Because we have gone there so many times, for so many years, we just, we have these experiences that have done it for us. Remember that Christmas where you got your first bike, or you got this exceptional present. It's like, wow, I wish I could duplicate that feeling. Or you had all family around, or a huge group of friends, and we had some great times together. And so we want to duplicate that feeling. And so we start looking in the wrong places. And we think that maybe if we give so-and-so a gift, maybe we'll get something really good back. Maybe we'll get a gift this Christmas that will do it for us. Or for many of us, we're not looking for anybody to give us a gift. We're just going to go out and try and buy that gift that'll do it for us, right? And so shopping has gone mad for Christmas. I think in the States for the Black Friday deals, it was like $6 billion. How many of those people do you think are way happier now? There's a few that probably have a temporary happiness. Sure, they got a new toy for a little while, but it doesn't last. We need to find joy by getting or giving the right gift. Imagine a joy that you can't take away, that'll keep going with you even after Christmas. Because there is bound to be gifts this Christmas that you want to fill that hole that you can't afford. Or there's family members that are going to be missing and you can't make them come. And if you look for joy, you're going to be disillusioned. I know for my wife and I, my picture of a perfect Christmas is all of our kids back home, right? And our grandkids and having a great time. And we have a special event on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas morning we wake up and open the gifts. Not going to happen. For one, even if this wasn't a COVID season, three of our kids are married. So they have in-laws that we've got to juggle Christmas with. So it's difficult getting everybody together. And then, of course, with COVID... And then also some of them have jobs and they can't make it. So we've got to change our expectations. So we need to look elsewhere. And just imagine these magi. They've traveled for two years. They had sincere thoughts of actually wanting to worship Jesus. But they didn't know where to go. And so they end up at Herod's court. 
And you can imagine the heated discussions in the tent that night. What were we thinking? Two years and we got the wrong place. Can you imagine? What a waste of resources. Melchior, you were in charge of GPS. What's wrong? Right? And they looked in the wrong place. But it wasn't a total loss, was it? Because there was people there who knew the scriptures. See, that's where we need to start. If we want to find Jesus, we got to get into the book, into the Bible, into the story about Jesus, about God, if we want to find Jesus today. And so the scribes started to look and they found in the book of Micah that a prophet had predicted that Jesus, a new ruler, a king, would be born in Bethlehem. Ah, now we're back on track. And so they go to Bethlehem. The Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. And so with this new information, they set out to go to Bethlehem. Until the star stood over this little place where Jesus was born. So I want to challenge all of us this Christmas. Take that Bible off the shelf, dust it off a little bit, and start reading the story of Jesus. Maybe do a little research, and you don't have to be a Bible scholar. You can just Google the prophecies about Jesus and look back over the story throughout the Old Testament and see all the different pieces of the puzzle that come together in this birth of Jesus and come to Jesus in a new way this Christmas and begin to worship this God that no person could have orchestrate all of this coming together in this little baby in Bethlehem. And you can read about this wonderful counselor, this prince of peace, this savior. And if there's ever a time we needed a savior, it's now. Amen? Because Jesus is still the reason for the season. One more question. What do you give this Christmas? You got to know who you're looking for, what you're looking for. You got to know where to look for it, but then you got to know what to give when you get there. See, our level of joy in Christmas is directly related to what we give. If you are sitting back waiting for what you're going to get, you're going to be disappointed. But if you proactively this Christmas season choose to give, it's going to change a lot of things. One of my best Christmases was when I was young, when I had no presents, when I wasn't around family, when I was 24 or so, in a little village in India sharing the gospel. That's always going to stay as a precious, joyful Christmas for me. I didn't get anything, but I did get a whole lot. So the people who were listening earnestly to Jesus. And so these magi come to Jesus. Notice, they didn't come with any expectations from Jesus. They go for two years, and they have brought and prepared presents for this baby to give him. So their only expectation of Christmas for them was to worship him and to give him these presents worthy of a king. Their whole focus is, where is this king? So that we can give him our gifts and so we can worship him. Where is this king so we can give generously? And they gave him gifts worthy of a king. The gifts they gave were entirely appropriate. And maybe you've heard something about these gifts. But it's interesting. They give him gold, which is a gift that you would give a king. And by giving it, they acknowledge that this baby was going to be a king. And then they gave frankincense. Frankincense is a gift that you give priests. See, frankincense 
was the incense that the priests would use in the temple. And by giving it, they acknowledged that this baby would become this king and this priest, the one who would bring us to God. And then they gave him myrrh. That's a little bit more somber. Myrrh is a gift that you bring to a dead body in the first century. It was a fragment ointment that was often used for, to prepare a body for burial. And by giving it, they acknowledged that Jesus had come to die for the sins of the world. And I'm sure they didn't understand all the significance of their gifts at that point. But by faith, they were giving to somebody they believed would be a king. Go back and have a look at that song, We Three Kings, later. It talks about some of that. And notice the gift. It's never about what Jesus needs. Jesus didn't need gold as a baby, did he? This Christmas, we can't possibly give God anything he doesn't have, can we? I mean, Jesus, when he's sitting there in that little feeding trough, manger, I mean, if there's anything he needs, it's a diaper, right? Or maybe a little bit of milk from his mom. That's it. He doesn't need gold and frankincense of myrrh. But those gifts were generous and they were appropriate. Because they weren't giving those gifts based on what they saw at the moment. They were giving it based on who this person would become and what he deserved. And I want to encourage all of us this Christmas to give generously. Help our church to finish strong. But don't just limit it to giving financially. Give yourself this Christmas. Look for ways you can help others. See, Jesus is still living among us. Let's give the gift of love and kindness and grace to our friends and family. We ought to give the gift of our help to those who are hurting. Go help at Hope Mission, Mission or the Mustard Seed or your neighbor or somebody you know that's hurting. Because when we do, we're going to find that you're not going to be able to escape the joy this Christmas. And you're going to find that the joy will just come. And Christmas will suddenly become this meaningful experience again. So what are you giving for Christmas this year? Why not start with giving yourself? Give your time to your family. Give your compassion to the hurting. Give your forgiveness to the isolated. Give generously. And give your heart to worship Jesus. And I promise you, when you look for the right thing, when you look in the right places, when you give the right gift, you're going to have joy this Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that you are among us. That you did grow up to be a king. That you did die for us. That you, did, you made a way for us to go and see your Father in heaven. To be a part of your family. You interceded for us. And God, I pray for each person listening out there and here this morning, if there are any that are not experiencing joy this Christmas, that you would enter their hearts. Give them the courage to say, Jesus, I want you to come and be my king, to be my savior. Come and change my life this Christmas so that I can experience joy like never before. Joy beyond what presents can bring. Joy beyond what I expect. Joy that comes simply from worshiping you and allowing you to lead us. Thank you for your word this morning. In your name, amen. Haram's going to lead us as we close. No heart.
is so good, isn't he? He's good to you. He's good to me. Just a reminder, take a short break before we start up our meeting. I uh, encourage you to find our website and tune in. Just the members can vote, but everybody else is welcome to join in and hear about what God is doing among us. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Thank you for joining us.